Welcome to the Daily Update. This is being prepared Thursday, June 16th, where we'll look at the action in the market today and then see how things look for Friday, June 17th. And before I get going, I do have a couple of announcements to make. I am going to start opening the program that I have for membership. And the idea is to probably open it this fall. But I'm going to make an announcement about what's involved in the program and how this can benefit you. And it's my intentions to prepare a video this coming weekend. So be on the lookout for that. It'll be different than the other videos that I do. So if that's interesting to you, I hope that you view it and get something out of it. Also, please double check your YouTube subscription. I've been having just a tremendous amount of subscribers. Well, most of them are bogus. And so YouTube is going through all of my accounts and kicking out people that they don't think are for real. So if you did subscribe to the channel and suddenly you look and you go, wait a minute, it says subscribe. Well, please go ahead and subscribe again if that happened to you. It can also kick out some legitimate folks. Attempts are being made to make more use of the blog. This is the problem that I run into when I'm going to be late posting of the video or if something comes up for me. And the only way I know how to get a hold of you right now is by making a short video and just telling you. Well, I do have a blog and I keep saying I'm going to use that more. It's just I never seem to get around to it and I'm not quite sure what direction I want to take that. The web address is spxinvestingblog.com. My thoughts were to use the community channel on YouTube. A lot of people don't really use that. And since I was above 500, now I'm below 500. The other day I was up over 600. Who knows what I'll be at tomorrow. I can't really count on that. So what I would like to start doing is posting on my blog just saying, I can't do a video today or it's going to be late or... This is what's going on. Just a way to be able to communicate with you. So please go to spxinvestingblog.com, sign up, and then not only can you go to the blog and read something, but you can also have it emailed to you whenever I make some kind of an announcement. And while I'm going through the video today, please understand this is going to be a take one video. When I prepare Friday's video, I have some time commitments right after that, and I just don't have the time to go back and edit things. So please be patient with me as I trip over words and make mistakes and do the things that I seem to be very good at. Ahead of time, just know one week from Friday, I will not be able to do a video that day. I have some other commitments and the way things are set up. I'm just not going to have time to prepare, record, edit the video amongst other things that are happening that day. So there won't be a daily video on Friday, June 24th. And I'm also taking out the technical overview for right now in the daily videos. It's the same every day. So I'm like, okay, I just hit the button and go through the same list. Don't worry. I'm still watching things. I'll bring it back when it's necessary. But I'm trying to get rid of as much duplication as possible. Yeah, there are some charts that we need to look at every day, but ones that are just saying the same thing over and over, that's just wasting everybody's time. Okay, so let's go back and talk about Thursday. Right at the open, we had a massive gap lower, and we were down pretty heavy overnight. Some things happened in Europe that I'll talk about, and that fed into their markets, which then led to the futures really being negative, and the happy feeling that everybody felt on Wednesday suddenly turned to the hangover that I was talking about that happened the next day. We then went down below S2 at 3668. As the day went on, not much really happened after that. We drifted a little bit above, a little bit below S2. Going into the close, prices closed just below S2. We were down 3.25%, a pretty big monster down move. Volume was above average, and the technicals are still very negative and showing some oversold indications. And I have some new charts that I want to go through in this video. And let me know what you think of them to see if they're giving you any insight. 
Inflation and interest rates are the real concerns right now. Of course, we have the geopolitical concerns always in the background, and then earnings as they come out. What are some comments that we can make? Some of the other central banks in the world, they've made all these announcements now saying that they're going to be more aggressive after the Fed went ahead and raised interest rates on Wednesday. So that made some other countries act. The Swiss National Bank announced a surprise rate hike of 50 basis points or half a percent. The Bank of England, they jacked up their rate by 25 basis points while also projecting a decline of 0.3 in their second quarter GDP. And even Brazil got into the mix where their central bank raised their key rate by 50 basis points. So, and it should be are they, not are hey. Are they trying just to catch up? Why are they doing all of this? Yes, it happened in the U.S., and U.S. tends to be the leader, but if you have all these other countries doing it too, that's more global in scope, and that's really producing some recession fears. Fear is still extreme that I'll show you, and there are just lots of re recession concerns. You've got a lot of people that aren't quite willing to admit that we're going into a recession. You have other people that just say, yeah, that's what's going to happen. The debate goes back and forth right now. We just kind of have to be prepared, but also wait to see what happens. The economic reports that came out show that housing starts declined 14.4% on a month-over-month -month basis. That's pretty big. Also, building permits, which tends to be a leading indicator. It declined 7% on a month-over-month -month basis. See, we're starting to slow down. These are recession-type things that are happening. Initial jobless claims decreased by 3,000. That's one of the things that's really throwing some uncertainty into this. Usually, when we hit a recession, employment goes down the tubes, too. That's not what's happening right now. We have a very low in unemployment rate. We have... Lots of jobs seemingly to be out there, but how long are they going to last if we do head into a recession? The Philadelphia Fed survey, it fell to minus 3.3. They expected it to be 5, positive 5, and it had been 2.6 in May. So that's showing more slowdown. Our trend is negative. The bias in that should not be mixed. We are negative right now. I forgot to change that. Momentum is clearly negative. Going back, first looking at sentiment, we are at extreme fear. Lucky 13 right now. So we're back down below 25 and looking pretty fearful. The VIX spiked up, but not necessarily as much as you would think. Here we're going down, 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 and the VIX is not making a new high on a closing basis. And it closed off of the high on the bar chart. Hmm. The VIX of the VIX also went up, but is not necessarily extreme right now. It might have more room to run to the upside, which means more fear, which usually happens when we have declines. The ulcer index, and I'm showing you the longer term chart here just to show that we're getting to kind of an extreme level. There's no magic about these levels. It stops when it stops, but just comparing to where we've been, especially in 2022, we're getting close to those levels again. We're down 23.55% from the all-time high. The five-day equity put-call ratio is continuing to spike up. That also suggests there's more fear in the market. And then this is a longer-term look that I wanted to give you. Because it's one thing to see this and go, oh, yeah, I see nice little squiggly lines. When we look at this longer term, we say, oh, yeah, we're getting above 0.8 here. Hmm, this is pretty extreme. And if you look at these extreme readings and what happened with the S&P after that, sometimes that marked a bottom. But we can still go higher from here. This is the NFIB Small Business Confidence Index. That's a report that came out a couple of days ago. That's the black line here. And when we're below this dotted line, we're looking at possible recessionary levels. And then this blue line here is the S&P 500. Also, I showed this in yesterday's video, but it seems to be making as much news today, is that the GDP now, which is the forecast for GDP, 
It's not negative. It's not positive. They've plotted it right at zero. But that seems to be making news again today. This is what you go see if you go to their actual site. This is the blue chip consensus. This is what they think it will be, right around 3%. And this is the range of the top 10 and bottom 10 average forecasts. They kind of mix them all together. So the forecasts think that we're going to be at around 3%. The Atlanta Fed GDP Now estimate has this right down here at zero. So somebody's not right here. Another thing that I found at IsabelNet is at the lows, everyone will expect the, the Fed to cut rates. Yeah, well, duh. But we're not even close to that now. We're in a rising rate environment. But just other times when things really happen, that's when the Fed starts to cut rates, or at least there's an expectation of rate cuts. Also, the global profit expectations are also getting to be very weak. And we're seeing some real back and forth here. I have something that kind of contradicts what this is showing. But these are just profits overall, and it shows them declining. And then what's the big market right now? Well, duh, it's oil, and it has been all year. The dollar has been doing pretty good, being short in treasuries, short in China stocks, long in ESG, and I'm not going to get into that stuff, long in cash, long in Bitcoin. And you can see how it's really coming down quite a bit. But folks who have been in the energy sector all year are seeing really nice returns. Now that everybody's starting to jump in, hmm, that's usually when the party is about over. They'll get in long enough just to think they did the right thing, and it will go up, and they'll see a profit, and then when things really start to turn, they'll say, oh, I'll just buy the dip, or it's going to come back, it's going to come back, and then all of a sudden, everything switches. That's what happens quite often. The right X bear bull ratio was updated and it shows that we're at 0.10 right now. Not showing an extreme fearful reading, but people are favoring the bearish mutual funds over the bullish ones. We have our weekly survey of the active asset managers. And as expected, with the real down move, it has declined. It got up to 50. Now it's down to 32.18. Looking at some earnings things, I was reading through some Edward Yardeni insights, and he's kind of the rock star economist these days. I know that's like an oxymoron, but anyway, he's very insightful in what he does. And he believes that the future earnings per share forecasts are pretty unrealistic right now due to the S&P 500 entering a bear market, which now we're in a bear market, while the economy may be entering a recession. Okay, and this is what he kind of talks about through the week of June 9th. So this is a little bit delayed. The consensus revenues for the S&P 500 for 2022 and 2023 are still at record highs. They think that the companies are just going to make more and more money. Industry analysts are cutting back on their profit margins for 2022 and 2023. But the forward profit margin rose to a record high last week. So it's like, wait a minute, if we're having a slowdown here, how come analysts are predicting that things are going to be even better in the future than they are now? They should be cutting their estimates. So as current odds, he says that we have about a 45% chance of going into a recession. When I first started watching his videos on YouTube that he now starts to post, he was at about 40%. Well, he's raised that to 45%. And this is from his one of the charts that he makes where this is just showing the revenues per share, how it's going up for 2022 and up for 2023. Hmm. Here, we have the earnings per share forecast. Up for 2022, up for 2023. The profit margin starting to kind of fizzle out a little bit for 2022 and decline in 2023. So he's seeing a real mix-up right there. I also found this. 
where this is also showing earn, earnings estimates for 2022. And this shows that they're a bit in a decline right now. So if you go back to his chart, the earnings per share, it still shows them going higher, where if you look at this chart, it looks like they're starting to roll over. So we're getting some contradictory information right now. Support and resistance. Here is the support levels. I should say here are the support levels for Friday on here. And again, let me know if you find these useful or not. These are just different levels that I have found to be effective. I usually use the standard pivots myself. Here's the daily chart showing how we broke down here. We're still above S2, which is at 35.86. That's our next support level or S2 for that chart. Here's the machine gun chart showing kind of that same thing in a longer term look. And all these other machine gun lines back here, these are previous pivot levels. And we might end up using some of them as a support level if we continue to fall. Or if we go up, they might become resistance. This also kind of takes out some of the noise that we see and shows how we've broken down below the FIB level here and we're coming down to what could be another level. And then here is just the daily pivots for the month. And as I said yesterday, the only thing that changes is the bar up here. These pivots stay the same for the entire month. We've broken down below the previous low that we set back in 2021. So that is quite negative. And we're coming down to the 50% retracement at about 35.13. Now please understand, I draw these fib lines. I don't have a computer that does this. I just kind of eyeball it myself. So some of these levels might be slightly off. And then looking at our weekly chart, I'm going to have a very interesting chart to show you next. It just shows how we've now broken down below the long-term level at 38.2. This is one, and this was actually pointed out to me by a very astute video watcher where I was sent a note saying, hmm, if you look at the weekly chart with a 200-week moving average, okay, that goes back all the way to 1980, and a lot of times that provides pretty good support. I had a chart of that a few days ago. But notice how the 200-week moving average is coming right down to the 50% retracement from the COVID low. We're starting to see a convergence here, right at about 3508. So figure around the 3500 area. That is major long-term support. Looking at our sectors, all of them were down with energy actually getting hit the hardest and discretionary, the usual culprit. And energy is still up with all the other sectors down on the year. Technical alerts, whole nother list and they're all red. We set another 52 week low with the S&P. We went below 3,700. And that's all I see for the S&P right now. You may just wanna pause this and look at it and just go, oh my gosh, things don't look very good right now. Intraday, this is what happened overnight. Here's when everybody was gyrating around after the Fed made their announcement. Then right at about here is when the overnight session picks up. And we were hanging in there okay, but then Europe started to have some issues and the futures really started to go down. And right about in this area is where we opened. So that caused this huge gap down below S1 all the way down to S2 eventually. And we pretty much just skated along S2, a little bit above, a little bit below, and we ended up closing right at about S2. Our trend is negative. Looking at breadth, we kind of overdid it on a one day basis looking at the advanced decline ratio. So we're pretty extreme there. The advanced decline line is showing a lot of weakness now. The advanced decline ratio is also showing weakness and starting to get extreme negative. New highs, new lows are clearly trending lower. And just look how this thing is just going down, down, down. Accumulation distribution also showing weakness.
Here's the S&P showing that we're coming down now with those percent of stocks that are above their 200-day simple moving average and not necessarily extreme, but getting close. Here's another newer chart that just shows a 19-day exponential moving average of the advanced decline line ratio. Based on price, we're extreme negative. Based on volume, we are extreme negative. Looking at some short-term charts, we overdid it on a one-day rate of change, five-day rate of change. The force index is starting to get extreme negative. Ten-day rate of change is extreme. The Swinland trading oscillator showed a little bit of a bounce. Hmm, look at that. We've had a couple of down days. Well, we had the up day, then the down day. Sometimes... This can be a bit of a leading indicator. McClellan Oscillator, extreme negative. Stoke RSI and Williams Percent R, extreme negative. Our moving average study, extreme on the 20, 50, and 200. Stoke, short term, intermediate term, and even long term now are starting to get extreme negative. Some intermediate charts. The PMO extreme negative with those PMOs that are rising, buy signals, extreme negative, and those that are above zero, getting to extreme negative. Standard deviation, we're just shooting way off the charts here. We're a long ways away from the mean price. Sean Trend Meter, extreme negative. Jake and Oscillator, trying to turn up a little bit here. That's why I included this chart. Shake and money flow finally turned a little bit negative. Volume is really picking up as we're going down. Vortex is still negative. Summation index, negative based on price and volume. All of our oscillators have now switched back to negative. Short, intermediate, and long term. BPI, and this is why I included the little longer chart here. We're starting to get down to COVID levels with the extreme negative reading in the BPI. Ultimate oscillator starting to get extreme negative. Rate of change going back 50 periods, extreme negative. Boom indicator looking back 50 periods with the 50 period moving average, extreme. 200, we're getting close, and this is a longer term oversold reading. RSI on nine periods is extreme, still a little ways to go with the 14. TTM squeeze has switched over to negative. Our different charts, the only one that's really showing us anything new is the point and figure. We have this double bottom breakdown, just like the dance. There is no dance by that name, but we have a couple of new zeros drawn in here. Our trading systems, the elder is negative with the SPX. SPY, SAR is negative. Go no go is deep purple. Long term charts, and I'm trying to show a little bit longer one here. Nope, I guess I didn't. Where we're showing an extreme negative reading in the 50, 150, and 200. Rate of change for 200 periods is starting to get back to the COVID lows. Big picture look of the five period moving average of the highs and the lows going into extreme negative territory and still could go down from here. Special K, negative. Broad market, diamonds, negative. Qs, which had switched to neutral, are back to negative. This is another new chart. And I was watching a video and the gentleman brought this up and I thought, okay, this is pretty cool. Here's the S&P, where we're making a lower low. That's what we've been doing lately. What are we doing now if you take a ratio of the Qs to the SPY? We're showing a bullish divergence. Hmm. When you take discretionary to the SPY, we're showing a bullish divergence. When you look at large cap growth, and large cap should be value in there, we are showing a bullish divergence. Hmm. That might suggest a bottom could be near. Have another chart too. Growth and value showing a bullish divergence. Growth value in the mid caps, bullish divergence. 
growth value ratio with the small caps, bullish divergence. This could be a setup for a potential bounce. And when you take some of the other things, looking at the 200 week moving average, when you see all these oversold conditions, when you're seeing sentiment very, very extreme, doesn't mean it's necessarily going to happen right now, but it may indicate that some kind of a bottom is near. The dollar index just got hammered down 1.45%. That was another interesting thing that I noticed. Stocks were down and the dollar was down at the same time. They've been going in opposite directions of each other lately. So that's kind of interesting too. And this just shows the curl up that we've been seeing, where as the dollar's been going up, the S&P's been going down. Well, they don't have as close of an inverse relationship as they used to have. Oil kind of behaved itself. Everything else was going crazy, and oil just sat off here being at astronomical levels. Not really changing. Bitcoin is still showing more declining. And it's down into the 20s. If it breaks below 20, that seems to be the next kind of big level now. We'll see. I thought it would go a little bit faster once we broke below 30. But it's kind of been orderly. And then we're just going down here. Looking at bonds, there's a, still a strong correlation between the S&P going down and bonds going up. Although both the 10-year yield and the S&P were down. Tech 10 also curled up a little bit because interest rates declined slightly as long, along with tech. We're still showing, I think two charts on here are still inverted. The 10 to the 2 is fine. The 10 to the 3 month is fine. The usual culprits, the 30 to the 5 is right at zero. Imagine that. You can get the same yield. Tying your money up for five years or tying it up for 30 years? Hmm, not a hard decision to make. The 10 to the 5 is still inverted. The TED to the Fed funds rate is still behaving. Treasury yields really came down across the board. Possible positive scenarios. Not an awful lot to really look at that's positive. We're still continuing to spike with the two-year even though it was down slightly. And the correlation just shows that yields came down and stocks came down. That's another interesting thing that happened, was they've been moving in opposite directions. Well, they both declined on Thursday. The staple spike, we came back up a little bit, so now it's like, okay, are we forming some kind of head and shoulders thingy here? Not quite sure at this point. We just have to keep an eye on this. So then, what is our outlook for Friday? The technicals are negative and oversold. Sentiment is extreme. We have industrial production and capacity utilization. Those are kind of the bigger ones coming out. Of course, all the geopolitical events, Russia, Ukraine, China, supply chain, inflation, interest rates, growth concerns, possibility of margin calls, oil, earnings as they come out, more Fed speak. What's going on in Japan? All of those things could come to the forefront at any time, but right now it's inflation and interest rates. So our scenarios, we're down because of all the things I just said, and there still might be a little bit more reaction to FOMC doing their thing. Technicals are negative, but very oversold right now. What could help us go up? My goodness, seems almost impossible, which is disbelief. or Maybe something will happen and people will get a little happier. Possible positive scenarios, the staple spike, eh, it's kind of hanging in there, but it's pretty much the only one right now. Technicals, not really going to help us unless we get massively oversold and hit massive support and are able to bounce up off of that. And then sideways, we're not sideways because the ADX is above 20. So our conclusion. S&P is negative. Short term, negative, oversold. Intermediate term, negative, oversold. Long term, negative. So thank you. I hope you have a wonderful Friday. I will try to prepare the video for Monday just as soon as possible, as well as the weekly video and the intermarket analysis video, and additionally the program overview video that I told you that I'm working on right now.